Fighting fear with facts. It's what we're trying to do every night during this pandemic at around this time. Tonight we're joined by Mayor Ron Nuremberg, who joins us each and every Wednesday or has since this crisis began. Mr. Mayor, thank you for being with us tonight. Good evening. Great to be with you. I, I want to get to some of our questions and some of our viewer questions tonight. The first question is one that I've had for a while. Have you actually been tested for COVID-19? No, I have not. Um, obviously, I'm grateful that I haven't been, um, haven't exhibited symptoms or been exposed to anyone who's had it, um, thankfully. But, um, you know, when, once the asymptomatic testing really ramps up, I might just go in just for peace of mind, but we're not there yet. Yeah, that's why I was curious. And that leads to our viewer question here. Can anyone who wants a test get a test at this point, even people without symptoms? You know, uh, the answer technically uh, right now is yes, because we've opened up the uh, testing protocols pretty widely. So if there is any reason for you to get a test, there is a test available for you. And I just made mention this evening about the mobile testing sites that are going to be moving around the city. Uh, we have a couple of them opening up tomorrow uh, from nine to five where you don't need an appointment. You don't need um, it doesn't cost any money. So we're really trying to get tests out there. I will say, though, that the test is most um, accurate and uh, critical for people who are exhibiting some symptom or know they've been exposed. Otherwise, it's really not um, necessary to, to be administered a diagnostic test. Are you still concerned that not enough people are getting tested? I know this was a concern for you at one point when we were talking about the Freeman Coliseum site. Are you concerned that people aren't showing up to get tested who maybe should be getting tested? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, and that's why we've been pushing the message uh, so loudly uh, every night, which is that if you have a symptom, uh, if you've been exposed, if there's reason you believe that you need a test, you should go get a test. And, you know, we have to bust some myths, bust some myths about that. You don't need a doctor. You don't need a primary care provider. You don't need health insurance. You don't need money to go get a test. If you need to be tested, we want you to get tested. And so we have the mobile clinic set up. We have uh, private providers that are providing it. We have the drive uh, up clinic, uh, drive up uh, testing site at Freeman. There's a lot of places to get them. We want to make sure people are taking the test. Right. And again, for what you said, you don't need money. You don't need insurance. You don't need a doctor. That's right. If you have the symptoms, go get tested. Absolutely. Okay. 100%. The next question has to do, I know that you have uh, voiced some concerns in the past about people not wearing their masks in places where they yes. should be. Are masks becoming a political issue? Unfortunately, they are, as most things tend to be in this day and age, but it, it really shouldn't be. This is guidance from um, every part of the political spectrum when it comes to health professionals. Uh, this is CDC guidance. It's local public health authority guidance. It is common sense to wear a mask. And the reason is we know that there's a high rate of infection that we just aren't seeing uh, that in which people don't show symptoms. They're not feeling sick. They're they're asymptomatic. And there's not enough research to determine whether or not the asymptomatic uh, infected individuals are really um, infecting a lot of others are very contagious. We know that the contagion factor goes down when somebody's wearing a mask. So for the protection of other people, whether you feel sick or not, or if you feel sick, you shouldn't be going out. But if you don't feel sick, you may in fact be infected and we want you to wear a mask. And until we really have vaccines and other therapeutics that directly address this issue, people are gonna have to get used to wearing masks. That's really our main, one of our main ways as we open up of slowing the spread of this virus. Somebody asked on my Twitter account tonight, when do you think we'll get to the point where we don't have to wear masks? I, I think it's gonna be some time, unfortunately. This is just gonna be a, another accessory that people leave the house with for a while. I think until we get very clear um, uh, guidance about antibody testing, and te antibody testing is done en masse across the country, uh, which we're not at yet because uh, the antibody tests that have been available are very inaccurate. Um, and they're starting to roll out a little bit faster, but we don't, we're not there yet with the antibody testing nationwide. And the other issue is there's no vaccine. There's really no therapeutics that are proven to work with this disease. So um, in order for us to limit the spread of it, we're asking people to wear masks. The public health officials are asking people to wear masks. Um, some people think it's silly. 
uh, the health officials will tell you it's saving lives. When will the San Antonio Public Library reopen? The next viewer question. That's a great question. And we are working uh, with our library officials right now on a reopening strategy. Uh, right now, they remain closed. They remain closed based on the health transition team guidance. But we're getting closer, especially as we see data that we've really flattened the curve, um, that we can begin to open those up. Uh, in Bear County, uh, the bibliotheques have been open now to provide some access uh, to technology. Um, the problem with the libraries, the traditional libraries, is that there's a lot of exchange of goods, hard goods. And so there's a lot of uh, mixing and mingling that doesn't take place at, say, a digital library like bibliotech. So there's a little bit different. And so we're going to be cautious, but we're wor working on a transition plan there. OK, our next question comes from viewer I Romero, E.C. Romero, maybe. Uh, now, now that we've shifted <laughs> from crisis to recovery mode, what is the biggest challenge in your opinion? You know, our, our biggest challenge, um, I think, is to sustain the energy uh, and the focus on ensuring that we need to build a healthy, durable, resilient economy. Uh, and that first requires us to have healthy people. So as we begin to recover and open things up, mind the public health guidance, because that's going to be a very basic element of us continuing to open up. But then I think it's going to be focused on what are the underlying health issues of our economy, not just people, but also the entire economy. We know that there's a huge uh, income disparity issue we've got to address, and it's going to change the way this economy, it has changed the way this economy functions, and it's made it susceptible to this crisis. Uh, we do know that the digital divide has been exposed uh, and, and how it really threatens the livelihoods of many families in this community. And we've also seen that uh, we really need to get people back into work so the paychecks start coming and people can start you know um paying bills again and, and paying rent and 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 enjoying the the fruits of a live economy unless we do those things in a resilient manner that addresses some of the underlying issues that we've known have had to be dealt with in our our economy we're only uh, achieving short-term gain but i can tell you myself judge wolf the city council the commissioner's court are focused on building a long-term durable resilient economy for everyone Next question, is it possible you will implement fines or issue more direct orders if businesses aren't following practices recommended by the economic transition team? It says transmission uh, team, but it means transition team. So. Yeah, well, so we will continue to enforce the orders as we have been before. And, um, you know, and that means that if there is guidance that it is just being violated willfully, uh, then we, we will enforce it, and that could include uh, pen penalties, civil penalties. Uh, but I will tell you that the vast, the, the reason why we've been able to achieve some success here with flattening the curve is because people understand and, and trust the health professionals in our community that what they're doing works, what they're guiding us to do works. Um, and, you know, but, but for egregious violations for people who are willfully putting other people and the, in their employees, per, per, potentially at risk, then there will be an enforcement um, mechanism to this. But I view that as, as a measure of last resort that we haven't had to go to, uh, but for a few times. Right. Okay. Last question I'd like to give to you. What do you want our viewers to know tonight? Oh, gosh. Well, what I want, so we've talked a lot about staying the course, um, you know, stay home, save lives. All that is still true. Uh, continue to do uh, the physical distancing and wearing masks when you're out in public and within six feet of someone. That is absolutely true. Continue to do that. We're not out of the woods. But I do have to say uh, you deserve a huge debt of gratitude because the data shows that this community has saved the lives of our loved ones and neighbors a lot. Uh, thousands of lives. Uh, we've helped flatten the curve and saved uh, the, the lives potentially of the healthcare workers and frontline employees that would have to deal with uh, overcapacity at hospitals and other emergency response uh, facilities. Uh, so it has worked and we have done a great job of flattening cur the curve. Now we want to open up and enjoy life and start to get back to, to business. Uh, we want to make strategic steps forward and only walk forward together uh, we don't want to have to walk backwards. So let's do it together strategically, 
thoughtfully according to the public health officials, and then we can look back at um, you know the 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 mountain that we've climbed together and how stronger and better off we are for it. Mayor Ron Nuremberg, I appreciate your time. ECs thanks you for answering her question too. <laughs> Thank you, ECs. Thank you, Steve. All right, take care. We'll be right back. You too.